So you're really, really an 80s fan. Okay, Flo, here's some more stuff for you. It's my greatest! It's I Love the 80s Strikes Back, and this is 1980. Again. Hit it. The flicks. That's right, we're back. The fashions, the trends, the TV. Monroe. <laughs> the tunes. I love you. A totally awesome year that gave us even more burning questions. Can being a gigolo get you into heaven? This is a guy who's giving orgasms to the elderly, and that's God's work. Is eight really enough? Eight friends, eight pieces of pie. Does that really come in eight? Isn't it ten? And what the hell was Superman thinking? Who cares that people are dying? Superman needs to tap that ass. The answers to those questions plus top 40 meets S&M. Correct and, and that bone-chilling sound. <laughs> because you still love the 80s, because you still own a satin jacket, admit it. That's right. This is 1980 Strike Back. Doesn't it ever bother you, Julian? What? What you do. Giving pleasure to women. I'm supposed to feel guilty about that. I'm just a gigolo, and everywhere I go. Pretty gay, yeah, gorgeous. Selling his body for money. We like that. <laughs> Richard Gere is pimping, y'all. I mean, I wanted to have sex with him. It's almost like a pretty woman, but he's pretty man. I have a hard time watching this film because, uh, well... Cheap shot coming. I knew the gerber. Oh! Best part? Started all the hype. Full frontal for Richard Gere. I remember Richard Gere from here up naked, but I don't remember his ween. Do you? Do you remember his ween? I was nine at the time, so it raises some questions. Like... Why isn't my dad that big? It took me three hours to get her off. He was everything you want in a man. For a while, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. Sexy as hell. Who else would have taken that time? I cared enough to do it right. Oh, yes, it's late night. Wow, you are making me thirsty just standing there. This is a guy who's giving orgasms to the elderly, and that's God's work. To this day, think of Richard Gere as a bit of a fool. Wow. Lauren Hutton in American Gigolo was probably the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. How many uh, languages do you speak? Five or six. Plus the uh, international language. Got sex without paying for it, didn't she? That's right. How come she never did ads for The Gap? The Gap and the teeth? Hot. I wanted to marry that Gap. <laughs> Get out. Closer Comfort is genius because it starred the great Ted Knight. The great Ted Knight was obviously overshadowed by the greater Jim J. Bullock. Monroe, 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 Monroe. He was supposed to be gay on the show, right? My condition is something often found in young men in the prime of their lives. They can't just say he's gay. So instead, they make him retarded. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still a virgin. I was floored when I heard Monroe had yet to have sex with a woman. The choice that he wanted to make in terms of popping his cherry was slightly bizarre. You want to make love to me. Very badly. Wow, that's different. <laughs> it was an 80-year-old woman? Hmm. Maybe some mom issues. But how about the foxy girls? Look what you're wearing right now. I always wondered how he seemed to have one blonde daughter and one Puerto Rican daughter. So brunette and so blonde. I think they were adopted, and I think Ted was, you know, wanted to keep them close. What do they mean? These are my daughters. Here's <laughs> your video. Give the pass a slam. They 
were the classic geek art school band. They're the geekiest people I've ever seen. Well, Geek Chic was a very big 80s thing, but um, those days are gone now. Why did they have the cross-eyed Asian woman in the video? What, there are no cross-eyed Asian people? I've never seen a cross-eyed Asian person ever. I'm sorry, but lazy eye is prevalent among all races. Whip it good? Those boys needed more sex. It sounded like some of that S and N stuff was going on with that whippet stuff. Whip it! It's a shape. Shape it up. Get yeah, straight. Go for it. I just remember the song sounded like they played it on like a Casio and sang it into a Mr. Microphone. Some 40-year-old punk's gonna beat the crap out of me when he sees us. Richie Rich was Arthur at 12 years old, but Richie Rich didn't really have the women problems nor the drinking problems that Arthur did. Rich, Richie Rich! Richie Rich was the first bling bling. All Jay-Z, Punky, all that. All of them, they bit that from that little, little cartoon, the little white boy. Now, how's a kid going to pay for a half a million dollars worth of bulldozers? <laughs> My name being Rich, everybody called me Richie Rich all the time when I was a kid, and I didn't have a butler named Cadbury or a dog named Dollar, and it made me very sad. He was so rich, he could have anything he wanted. It's time for lunch. A ham sandwich? Sure. Two desserts? Okay. Excellent choice, Master Richie. Didn't he have like a, a Sunday machine? He could get ice cream, whatever kind of Sunday, anytime. Free rich Sundays coming up. I was really jealous of that. Mm -hmm. Really wanted one. You kind of wonder why he wasn't really fat. Yeah! Fabulous wealth may not make you happy. Hey, you ruined my bowl of fruit stand. But it probably will. Here, take this week's allowance. As long as you have money, you can take care of any problem. Good message for the kids. <laughs> I think he, he probably would be married one of the Olsen twins, He's joining those two hyper fortunes. On second thought, he probably would have married both the Olsen twins. It could be worse. Pardon me, would you have any Grey Poupon? Pardon me, do you have any Grey Poupon? Excuse me, old chap, do you have any Grey you? Yes, sir. Get your own. You have millions of dollars. Take your Grey Poupon, you English and go. I sued those bastards. I'd do my act back then for me to poop on. <laughs> All I'd hear is, <laughs> like the mustard. Eh, screw you. Is there poop in it? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard anybody say. The finer things in life. Happily, some are affordable, like Grey Poupon Dijon Mustard. It's uh, Grey Palpin. It's Grey Palpin. Grey Poupon Dijon Mustard. No matter how you say it, it does give you sort of an air of sophistication. I'm a fan of the mustard. I love Grey Poupon. It always made me feel so fancy, so rich. Grey Poupon is so fine, it's even made with white wine. Let's go through the yuppie checklist. I got the BMW, I got the IZOD, I got the Grey Poupon, and uh, I got it divorced. All I know is that I'm not allowed to have it because I'm not good enough for Grey Poupon. Grey Poupon. It even has wine. Coming up. The son of Jarrell gets an order. Kneel before Zod! Kneel before Zod! Plus, a different kind of superhero. Flash Gordon, quarterback, New York Jets. He's just a football player, but he has a pretty hard head if it can sustain having a steel dodgeball reamed at it. And the first Polynesian sidekick. Finally, a Polynesian character is going to appear on a national cartoon, and his name is Hula Hula. Next on I Love the 80s, the breakup songs of 1980. Because this boy, too, has love without a reason, I, Boy George, console you with the breakup songs of 1980. Boys Don't Cry by The Cure. Please Don't Go by Casey and the Sunshine Band. You've lost that love and feeling, my Hall of Notes. The breakup songs of 80. Aren't you prepared to let go now? Superman 2 was 
one of the first superhero pictures to cast the villains from leather bars. These three degenerates arrive on the planet Earth and take over the planet just at the very moment that Superman gave up his own superpowers for love. I don't know what to say. Just say you love me. What a wuss. The Superman couldn't have sex with Lois Lane until he sort of became a normal human. He had to deflate to a normal man before he could actually inflate for Lois Lane. Hey, I'm a guy, I know. We'll do a lot of crazy things for a piece of ass. Who cares that people are dying? Superman, help us! Superman needs to tap that ass. Was it worth it, Superman? I want the man I fell in love with. I know that, Lois. I wish you were here. But that lasted all, you know, ten minutes when he had to go back and deal with the three freaks. General! Would you care to step outside? Superman! The main bad guy was a general, and his name was General Goldberg. Zod. Oh, Zod. Kneel before Zod! Kneel before Zod! I have powers beyond reason here. The girl kind of had a Rose McGowan thing going on, which I thought was pretty cool, before I really knew what to think about all that stuff. I just remember some great battle with Superman and the villains, right? And there's all this stuff blowing through the city streets. And a couple of people walk out of a burger joint. And they're like, whoa, there's a oh, battle between superpowers here. Mm, these are good fries. I wouldn't know anything about Superman. This is where you play the Superman clip. You cut to, I can't stand to fly. And then I look like an idiot. <laughs> Awesome. Plastic Man. He can swing. He can fly. He can bounce. Weird that he was called Plastic Man, but he was rubbery. He can stretch. You could stretch back this way and grab somebody and boom like that. It'd be great to be plastic, I guess, unless it's really hot. Plastic Man had the worst outfit of any superhero. It looked like... Elvis in his underwear. I bet you his wife digs it. I can stretch any body part I want as big as I want. Don't worry! Finally, a Polynesian character is going to appear on a national cartoon, and his name is Hula Hula. Stuck in seaweed, my bad luck does it again. Any superhero who hangs out with a guy named Bad Luck Hula Hula is just asking to be thrown out of the Justice League. I give a year's supply of pineapples to get my hands on the weed. On the weed. On the weed. Somebody is having a good laugh when they name the arch villain the weed. <laughs> Get rid of him. The weed is everybody's nemesis. <laughs> I'm the ruler of the galaxy. What else can we think of this week, fellas? Hmm, let's make a plastic man out to get the weed. What is this? Hi there. It's Plastic Man. That was really a show that you know you could really misinterpret it. Sort of like, you know, Puff the Magic Dragon. Let's pick up my fantastic elastic lover boy. Eat your heart out. Flash Gordon leaps from the comic pages onto the screen and falls flat on his face. Flash. Ah. Flash. Ah. Flash. Ah. Flash. Ah. Flash. Flash. Ah. Flash. Somehow the music of Queen seemed just right for an action adventure where everyone looks like a solid gold dancer. Who are you? Flash Gordon. Quarterback, New York Jets. When you hear the term Flash Gordon, you think that either Flash, he's either fast or pervert. What do you think? Flash Gordon was a superhero, but he really didn't do anything. As a matter of fact, he couldn't see through walls, you know, nothing came out of his eyes. He's just a football player, but he has a pretty hard head if it can sustain having a steel dodgeball ringed at it. He is sacked by this role. In fact, the whole movie should be sacked in a plastic bag. Look out, Flash! It was cheesy, but it was good cheesy. It's very over the top. The costumes alone were fantastic. I think it must have probably played in Europe for 15 years.
It's a thought amplifier. Don't you have telepathy on Earth? I want to know what you're thinking. Flash Gordon gets taken advantage of by his telepathy therapist. Oh, my God, this girl's really turning me on. I, I didn't quite get that. Think it again. Forget I thought it. I actually do believe in telepathy. I have a little cat, and I would call him all the time just by thinking of him, and he would always come. I went out with a boyfriend. He said, I'm going to take you to the Flash Gordon film. And um, turned up at the cinema, and it wasn't Flash Gordon at all. It was Flash Gordon. I, I learned a lot from Flash Gordon, put it that way. Cheapest video ever. I think it was done in, in Joe Jackson's basement. I think somebody tried to plug something in and something happened to the background by accident and got, oh man, that looks great. Production values were heightened fivefold just by the sheer volume of sequence. They were all hand sewn by Elizabeth Taylor. Just remember him like doing his dance. The guy was stiff. He has not grown as a dancer, which is so sad because he has so much talent. Cam Moore just standing there. What is wrong with him? I wish you'd come up with some more moves because the moonwalk was so awesome. And it was very normal back then. He wasn't into his crotch grabbing thing that he does that I don't know what he does, but he didn't do it then. Welcome to Real People. Would you like a sandwich? Real People uh, was a show where, where they brought on average people who had done amazing things. 59-year-old Liz Bevington has been sidewalk surfing since she first picked up a skateboard five years ago. Well, forget about the fake people for a second. These are the real people. On TV. It writes itself. Now, here are the real people, people, our hosts, Sarah Purcell. Sarah Purcell, Skip Stevenson, and Byron Allen, the brother on there. You know I always remember the brothers. I remember Sarah Purcell was very happy. You know, like it almost seemed like she was so happy that she was hastily depressed. Skip Stevenson looked like a like an aging Ken doll. Did you pop the corn yourself? Yes. Or did it just pop after you put it on? If I could just get rid of my genitalia, I would be Ken. It's fascinating. It was like the early jackass. Real people had this odd cascade of characters. It was like, I saved seven children from drowning. I can insert a nail into my nose. I have extremely strangely bendy arms. That's not real, that's freaky. I don't know that it's a bizarre talent, but I can f like a machine. <laughs> Should have been freaky people, odd people, stupid people. <laughs> Just tune in every week, every Friday night, 7.30. Stupid people is on! Coming up, just who was the host of Solid Gold? Oh, what's her name? The psychic. I should call the psychic hotline and get her name. And everybody's favorite bowl cut. Thank you. Something needed to, like, you know, trim it up a bit. Plus... Hope these guys have insurance. And it was just this orgy of car crashes. Next, the I Love the 80s strikes back. 1980. And now for Donald Loeb's unfinished thoughts on Superman. You know, the invisible man's doing Wonder Woman on the beach. And Superman's like, hey, check out Wonder Woman down there on the beach. And he flies down to do her, and the invisible man's like, oh! That's 80s humor. That's 80s humor. 1980. As we go a little something like this. Hit it. Damn, we start doing the freak. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is Doug E. Fresh. Classic of 1980 is Sugar Hill Gang Rappers Delight. Do it, I don't do it, I don't do it, do it, do it. I. Right. 
We're putting the band back together. We're on a mission from God. Blues Brothers is one of my favorite movies of all time. I've probably seen that 50 times. Every scene is so classic. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas. F pack of cigarettes. It's dark. We're wearing, and sunglasses. We're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. My favorite scene when the nun seems to float to the top of the stairs without moving her feet. Miss Nelson in sixth grade seemed to move the same way, especially when she was angry. Jesus! It's a comedy, but there's a lot of action in that movie. There's just this orgy of car crashes. Uh, we're in a truck! <laughs> Jake and Elwood are going to the mall, they're kind of driving through all casually, and everybody's getting out of the way, they're crashing through everything. Elwood looks at Jake and goes, Baby clothes. This place has got everything. And they just keep deadpan, keep moving along. My favorite scene was the Ray Charles scene, when he shoots the gun in the air so the kid wouldn't steal. Now go on, shit. I love that. That whole Aretha Franklin scene is just it's genius. A blues, brother. My favorite cameo in all that is Steven Spielberg. Can I help you? There's great cameos throughout the Blues Brothers. Uh, Vanilla Ice, the Insane Clown Posse, the Wu-Tang Clan. Raise up and God bless the United States of America! And the dancing? You tell me that's not some great dancing. If you're drinking a 12-pack of beer, yeah, you're gonna put on the Blues Brothers, it's gonna work every time. Get out. There's a plate of homemade wishes on the kitchen windowsill. And it is enough to fill our lives with love. <laughs> How metal is that? Dick Van Patten was a machine. I mean, he was having his wife just spit out these rug rats like nobody's business. We know he's fertile. We know he can procreate. Come on, get to the good detail. He's got two jobs, upstairs and downstairs, in the den and in the bedroom. Let's make some kids. Now i got to write my column. So that's where your years of valuable experience come in handy. Well, we each have our strong points. The point of the show was to demonstrate what a masochist Betty Buckley was. To move into a household filled with eight children, none of them hers. I'm going to marry this unattractive guy with eight kids. Look what I did for you. <laughs> Dick Van Patten. You always wonder, how did he get this good-looking second wife? You're like, this guy's a schlub. I was good-looking as a kid, and then, I don't know, something happened. There is an implied question in the title. Don't be afraid to ask. Is eight enough? Our house, eight friends, eight pieces of pie. Does that really come in eight? Isn't it ten? I don't know. I'm not good with numbers. For me, Nicholas was enough. Thank you. The only thing I felt bad for him was the haircut. Oh, something needed to, like, you know, trim it up a bit. They all were so different that I kept forgetting that they were siblings. I expected them to start dating each other. You hear about this kind of thing, but you never expect it to happen in your own family. I guess starting eight is enough. I played Willie's girlfriend that gets pregnant. Not by Willie, though. All I have to say about this show is eight is enough. Welcome to Solid Gold. Solid Gold. Filling up my life with music. Solid Gold was like, was it Danny Terrio? Danny Terrio wasn't on Solid Gold. He was on Dance Fever. It wasn't Don Cornelius, because he was so trained. Oh, what's her name? The psychic. I should call the psychic hotline and get her name. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Dion Warwick. Welcome to a special edition of our show. Did you think she knew it was going to be canceled? Mm. I'm calling my agent. I just remember how similar Madam and Dion Warwick looked. I give up. I just give up. You give up? Yes. That's the next thing I do on a date. <laughs> Any puppet that funny? That's solid gold. It's not the boogie. This wasn't a show about celebrating the hosts. This was a show about the dancers. 
They were the real thrust in this entertainment tour de force. My memories of Solid Gold are the dancers. And then the next memory would be the dancers. And then after that would be the dancers. I think that the dancers definitely look slutty, but slutty fabulous. Every dancer that stopped the routine did this. Solid Gold. And it would touch the lip just lightly. So I'd go, oh, 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 oh. To let you know that how sexy the song was. Those dancers are really responsible for teaching a legion of young boys how to masturbate on a Saturday afternoon. a satin jacket said you were hot to try and ready to go. As soon as you put one on, you felt like a rock star, even if he wasn't one. As soon as we see the rock stars do it, everybody with a hair on their ass out in the street goes, well, I'm a rock star, too. Something that was in the water in the 80s made you think things like satin jackets were cool. Satin is a genderless fabric. It's good for men. It's, it's good for women. I was a magnet when I got on the dance floor with the satin jacket. It's a miracle fabric. Satin jackets are the main reason I got so many girls in the 80s. Never trust a man in a satin jacket. I just show up in a satin jacket and a pair of chaps and nothing underneath. And, well, you do the math. I had a black satin jacket and I had a brown satin jacket. My favorite was a yellow one with a red basin straight down the seam. I gave this all to my crew to wear and they weren't that happy with the pink. And they were quite a motley crew, I must admit. I think people just had to have it on. It was it was part of the time. If you weren't in satin, you weren't in, period. I love it. What are you doing? I'm getting bad. Better get bad, Jack, because you ain't bad. You're going to get f***ed. Sir Crazy, Gene Wilder, Richard Pryor, the best. The irony about Sir Crazy is that he was directed by Sidney Poitier. That's very surprising. Because <laughs> Sidney Poitier seems like a guy that wouldn't do nonsense. Huh? Right on, Sidney, I ain't know that. Stir Crazy is the story of a New York playwright and his black friend who decide to drive to California and they get arrested on some trumped up charges in some little hick town somewhere. An old fun that two men can have in prison. Gene Wilder was Willy Wonka and Richard Pryor is the funniest mother on the planet. I can't feel that in my life. My favorite part was when they were going to jail and they had to act like they were cool. They were cool. It was like, uh-huh, that's, that's right, right. We, we bad. bad. Uh-huh, uh -huh. that's right. That's right. You don't want no shit either. They kept trying to torture Gene Wilder into performing the rodeo. They hung him up for days. It was actually a big torture movie, if you really think about it. And he, you know, he's on some reverse psychology thing with all the guards. I feel terrific. Thanks, Cap. The best part of the movie for me was Grossberg. Excuse me. Don't take it. Don't take it. This big pituitary case guy who was crushing Richard Pryor up against the wall of his cell. I'm just going to stand over here for a while. Tell me. Boys, don't cry. He was just so physically imposing. You know, he kind of had like, he looked like a bulldog. He had a lovely singing voice. Down in the valley, the valley, the valley so low, the valley so low. Who knew that Grossberger could sing? That's one of those songs you like, if you listen to it and think about it, you'll shed a tear, really. Hear the wind blow. Coming up, consider yourself officially dissed by Flo. Horseman kiss my ass. And the most famous sound effect in slasher movie history. <laughs> Next, on I Love the 80s, strikes back 1980s. But first, this public service announcement. I'm Lewis, the lifeguard, and happy to say I rescued a drowning potato today. They drowned in its sour cream. Oh, what a shame, because food's so much better when it's practically plain. So don't drown your food in mayo, salt, ketchup, or goop. Yuck, it's no fun to eat what you can't even see. So don't drown your food. Nerds of 1980.
What's happening, hot stuff? Getty Watanabe here, bringing you the nerds of 1980. Steve Jobs, computer nerd. Elvis Costello, punk nerd. And C-3PO, the nerd strikes back. The nerds of 1980. Trust me, the donger knows. What is this, Hell Week? No, Benjamin, this is the army. Private Benjamin was Goldie Hawn excelling in a man's world. I don't want to see you stop running unless you collapse, faint, or puke. Hey. It was a fun thing for people to see, including hunky males like me. It made me want to go into the army for a while. It really did. Okay, okay good. Yeah. Here's a woman who's having sex with her husband and he dies on her. <laughs> yeah. You and I might be scarred for life by that. But Goldie Hawn has the bubbly, resilient chromosome that lets her go on. Now, the next logical step is, well, I'm a widow now. I guess I'll join the army. The best line, I think, is when they hand her her green. Excuse me, sir. Is green the only color these comments? She's a little femme for a soldier. And that's, I believe, why her captain didn't like her. Captain Lewis was just one tough bitch. I think she was probably very jealous of Private Benjamin. I mean, who wouldn't be jealous? It's beautiful. Don't you look at me with those baby blues. <laughs> probably she wanted Private Benjamin. Private Benjamin, there was some hijinks. She puts blue dye into the shower head. She turns on the, the shower. Ha ha. I'm, I'm, I'm literally blue in the face. Yeah. I love it. Oh, I love it. It's 
fun. They are cheery. They're endlessly adaptable to any situation. I know what boys like. I know what guys want. It seems impractical. If you couldn't find a way to actually attach a Chinese kite to your head, these were a good, a good substitute. The ribbon barrette was the precursor to gang colors. The blue is uh, for the bloods. The yellow is for um, people with psoriasis. For that gang. I want you to want me. I want you. To want me. Cheap trick. Oh my god, that sounds like something on Santa Monica Boulevard. Actually, I thought I was a cheap trick. It's beyond want. He says it's want. And that's fine. It very quickly progresses to need. He's clearly a needy, needy man. I don't want him to necessarily want me. He can want someone else. I want you don't want me. Da 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 Hungry, Hungry Hippos is the name of the game, and whosoever hippo gets the most marbles wins. Hungry, Hungry Hippos was the coolest game out there. I just remember the commercial, the song. Hungry, Hungry Hippos, Hungry, Hungry Hippos. Hey, Hungry, Hungry Hippos. For those who didn't know anything about African wildlife, Hungry Hungry Hippo was an important education. Hippos are so cute and like fun looking, but then it's kind of an evil game because everyone's like gets all angry and feisty. It's a metaphor for society. Who can gobble up the most balls? Who can gobble up the most territory, perhaps? Weed is good. The Gordon Gecko Hippos. Your hippo reaches out and grabs the marble like that. And sometimes I would do it real slow. That's a hungry, hungry hippo in slow motion. You're hammering, trying to eat all the marbles, and then sometimes yours gets stuck, and that's the worst. I would always wind up with the defective hippo. See? Like if the pink hippo is going to get stuck, then I'd be like, you be the pink hippo. That's the lucky one. <laughs> I was always prone to cheating. I would try to steal my friend's marbles. When I was losing, I would just sweep the marbles under the hippo. And I'd be like, I won, I won. My hippo was hungrier than yours. Coming up, time to go to camp and get cut up into tiny little pieces. I don't think I've ever been that freaked out during a movie ever. Remember when camp was fun and you're like, I can't wait to go to camp, it's time to go to camp. And a year later, after Friday the 13th, I don't want to go to camp. <laughs> Friday the 13th, next on I Love the 80s, strikes back, 1980. But first, the what the f*** moment of 1980. In 1980, the Chipmunks release a punk album called Chipmunk Punk. The album cracked the top 40 and went gold. I'm sold on the rhyme scheme, but Alvin, Simon, and Theodore as straight edge, hey, Chipmunks, what the f***? Friday the 13th is the scariest movie I've ever seen in my life. What does that sound mean? That sound means nothing. It's actually Jif, 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 pop, pop, pop. It was a popcorn tie-in. Yes, thank you. It was product placement. When I saw it, I thought it was the greatest movie I'd ever seen. Are you crazy? But granted, I was only like eight years old, so my only other cinematic comparison was Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo and For Love of Benji. I don't think I've ever been that freaked out during a movie ever. Friday the 13th did for camp what Jaws did for skinny dipping. Remember when camp was fun and you're like, I can't wait to go to camp, it's time to go to camp. And a year later, after Friday the 13th, I don't want to go to camp! <laughs> You dirty whore! You're the one who wouldn't dance with me! Well, you're gonna pay now! They 
basically pre-AIDS, this was the only way you could stop teen pregnancy. We weren't doing anything. We were just messing up. <laughs> Kevin Bacon. Oh, I'm having sex. I'm having sex. Ah! There's an arrow sticking through my chest. Well, I, I'm Mrs. Voorhees. Most people think that Jason was the killer in all the fires at Jason, and that's not really the case. Jason doesn't show up in the mask until, like, episode three. The actual killer in Friday the 13th is Mrs. Voorhees, Jason Voorhees' mother. Jason was my son. You can drown. You never paid any attention. I wonder what happened to Mr. Voorhees. Why is Mrs. Voorhees having to do all the killing? Tell Mr. Voorhees to get off his dead ass and come out here and kill some of these teens. Perhaps the father is Freddy Krueger. And then the Freddy versus Jason thing becomes a sort of Oedipal uh, Star Wars. You see what I'm doing here? I'm wiggling my fingers. Think about it.